is pointed right at the center of your belt. The border is behind me, mister, and you're not going to make it. Have gun. Will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. You like Mr. Paladin? Uh, this is the finest jade chess piece I've ever seen, hey, boy. Yes. Where'd you get it? Oh, a gift from my honorable uncle, Sing Wo. Uh -huh. He ran a laundry. Where'd Sing Wo get it? Oh, from his great-grandfather, Hai Shung. Who got it from his grandfather Wong, who was faithful houseboy to celestial emperor in imperial court. Now it mine. Uh, I know you like chessmen, especially knights. So would be pleased if you will accept my gift. Well, very kind of you, hey boy, but I can't accept this. It'll ruin the rest of the set. Oh no, Mister Paladin, a set already ruined. Day before yesterday, three men come to my uncle's laundry. Police think they are men who bust out of jail. They hit Uncle on head. They steal money, clothes, chest set, too. Take everything, but uh, they see one piece. I see. I imagine your uncle would like to see those men caught. Oh, yes, sir. Very much. Very bad men. Well, you keep this, hey, boy. Let me see what I can do about getting back the rest of the set. Where's Sing Wo's laundry? On Turk Street. Oh, you can find the rest of set? I don't know, hey, boy. But I'll try. <laughs> This is Frank Knight speaking for the world's most honored watch, Longines. In the conquest of the Old West, men won fame through feats of bravery and daring. Today, things are different, but fame can still be won. How wonderful to win a Nobel Prize in science, a Pulitzer Award in literature, an Olympic gold medal in sports. These great honors are symbols of achievement. In the field of time, did you know that Longines watches have won more great public honors than any other watch in the world. This is true. The highest authorities have ranked Longines watches as the finest achievement in the science and art of watchmaking. Yet, the Longines, the world's most honored watch, styled with distinction, cased in precious metal, promising a lifetime of faultless timekeeping is not costly. Many models are priced as low as $75. And here's a suggestion. For Mother on Mother's Day, why not a Longines watch? Your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler will be honored to serve you. Sing Wo, honorable uncle of Hayboy, proprietor of the laundry on Turk Street, victim of three men who had stolen clothes, money, and chess set, was a wiry little man with a seamed, ageless face, who had plenty to say about the details of the matter. Unfortunately, what he had to say strained the language barrier too far, at least for me. But hey, boy, it made sense. He listened politely to Sing Wo's every word, nodding now and then and dodging now and then, since Sing Wo happened to be holding a flat iron in one hand, and Sing Wo was a man who insisted on a gesture to emphasize his words. Then suddenly he stopped, and standing like a little Buddha, listened as hey, boy, brought me up to date. Uncle Sing Wo say what he will do if he ever catch a man. Uh, did he happen to describe the men, hey, boy? Yes, sir. Oh, plenty big, plenty ugly. Well, that's not much of a description. No, sir. It won't be easy to find them since they have a two days head start. No, sir. I have no idea what direction they've gone. Uncle Sing Wo know where they go. What? Oh, he understands some words in American. I hear them say hide, big pine, then go to Canada. Big pine? Yes, sir. Big pine, Montana. Yeah, that's up near the border. Sounds like a good place for them to get across. They take all money Uncle Sing Wo have in world. He work hard for everything, all by himself. He's a terrible thing for old man to have nothing now, to uh, start all over again in hard, cruel world. Let's hope he won't have to start all over again, hey, boy. How much cash did they steal from him? $943. Plenty of money to Sing Wo. Plenty of money to anybody, hey, boy. I'll see you in a few days. Tell Sing Wo everything will be all right. Hello there. 
That's noon. My name is Paladin. I'm Ma Warren. You're just in time. Supper's ready. Good. So am I. You look a mite lean, Mr. Paladin. You been traveling long? Long enough. Tell me, Miss Warren, have you seen three men come through here any time during the past few days? No. Friends of yours? Oh, not exactly. If they were heading for Canada, they'd have to come through Big Pine, wouldn't they? Well, it depends on where they're coming from. The mountains. Well, then they'd have to come through here. Mr. Paladin, the food's good, room's clean, the price is right. And you're welcome. Only one rule. You hang your guns up right there. The custom of the house. I'm sorry, Miss Warren, but I never go anywhere without a gun. Nobody comes to my table armed. It's up to you, Mr. Paladin. Hang it up or get your supper somewhere else. What's that I smell? We're having pheasant today. Pheasant roasted in grape leaves. Mm. Miss Warren, you are an oasis in a desert of boiled beef. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it gun or the pheasant? No, I'll take the pheasant. Good boy. Hello, Ma. Chuck, this here is Mr. Paladin, Chuck Anderson. Hmm? Passing through? Slowly. And you're staying? A while. Why? Let's say I'm visiting. Who? He's visiting me. Hang up your gun before you go in there to eat. Sure, Ma. Who put the burr under his saddle? Oh, he always talks like that, Chuck does, dang it. He's a stranger around here? No. Say, now, if you expect to get any food, you better get started. Round my table, all them fellas have four and five hands. What fellas? Well, aside from Chuck, there's Mr. Gibson and Mr. Fry and Mr. Dayton. Well, I, I've got to get out to the kitchen. Now, you go and eat whenever you get ready. Mr. Gibson, Mr. Fry, Mr. Dayton... Sociable, up-to-date, debonair. What's this, a new word game? No, I'm just mentioning the qualities that people admire in other people. Oh, I see. If you're sociable, up-to-date, and uh, what was that other word, debonair? Yes, debonair. But listen to it this way. Notice how many of your friends are serving Pepsi-Cola these days. It's the up-to-date refreshment. Be sociable. Serve Pepsi. Just inside the door of Ma Warren's boarding house in Big Pine, there was a rack. And above the rack, a sign reading guns and hats. Since four gun belts were already hanging there along with four hats, I hung mine. Then I began to follow my nose in the direction of the dining room. I'm Nancy Warren, Ma's daughter. She told me to save a place for you, Mr. Paladin. Thanks. That food smells awfully good. Uh, this way. Uh, uh, this is Mr. Paladin, everybody. Mr. Gibson, Mr. Fry, and Mr. Dayton. Gentlemen. How do, Mr. Paladin? Dan Dayton. How do you do? And I reckon you know Chuck Anderson. Uh, we met. Yeah, yeah, we met. And you miss me, sweetheart? Oh, shut up, Chuck. I I'll bring your supper right out, Mr. Paladin. Hey, where do I sit? Any place. Any place you like. Uh, shove over, Dayton. Sure. Well, what's your line, mister? I'm a businessman of sorts. You live around here? Yeah, back up the road a piece. You've got a thousand acres. Mm. Sounds promising. What's your brand? Brand? <laughs> I don't need a brand, mister. I just tell folks what's mine, and they're smart enough to believe me. Here we are. I hope you enjoy it, Mr. Cullen. Nancy, come and Ma. 
thought you might like some nice hot coffee with your meal, Mr. Powers. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Hey. Hey, what about me? Come late, eat late. Come on, Nancy. Help me get them biscuits out here. All right, Ma. She's got my brand. Which one, mother or daughter? It will. <laughs> and I, you better get one thing straight right now. In this country, we shoot rustlers and claim jumpers on sight. That must be why Ma makes everyone check their guns. Why, you... This room's just full of rustlers and claim jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> Cross fishered you in your own gulch, boy. Well, I sure like to see a man sit out on the porch and enjoy a cigar after a meal, Mr. Pallant. Oh, it was a fine meal, Miss Warren. Thanks to the folks that bring it in, like the pheasant tonight. Mr. Gibson gave me to me. He does a lot of hunting and trapping. Regular customer of yours, is he? Oh, yes. He's been coming here for years. And Mr. Fry, he prospects a lot. He's always bringing in a mess of trout. Mr. Dayton? Dan? Well, he's a surveying for the railroad. He... Oh, hello, Nancy, honey. Hello, Ma. Evening, Mr. Paladin. Good evening, Nancy. Are you going riding with Chuck, dear? Oh, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind. <laughs> you will, or he will, or something one of these days. Mr. Pelton, your room's all ready whenever you want to turn in. It's the first door at the head of the stairs. Thank you. Good night. Night. Night, Nancy. Good night. Oh, I'm getting old, I swear. Uh, exactly what do you do? Uh, I have a, a card here that might explain. Have gun. Will travel. Shot. No. No, I'm just thinking. Can I hire you? What for? Chuck. He thinks he owns me. He scares everybody off, but he never says anything about getting married. I'll end up an old maid. Oh, hardly. Oh, yes, I will. Chuck was away for a whole month. Just got back a couple of days ago, and all the time he was gone, not one fella asked me to go riding with him. Chuck's got him all buffaloed, and he still won't do anything serious about me. You want him to? Well, well, he's got to make up his mind one way or another. What do you want me to do, shoot him? No, no, just make him nice and jealous. Oh, you want him to shoot me? Oh, no. No, but I want... What's the matter? Where'd you get that? Oh, this? Chuck gave it to me. Why? The jade chess piece. The rook, to be exact. Well, I, I didn't know what to do with it, so I put it on a chain. Where'd you I... get it? Well, he, he said he bought it from somebody. And he just got back here after being away a whole month? Yes. Put your arms around him, quick. Uh -huh. What? Hey. Hey, what's going on around here? Oh. Oh, well, well, nothing, Chuck. I've been waiting for you to go riding. Oh, well, that's too bad. Mr. Paladin's invited me to Eagle's Nest Butte see the moon rise. Look, I don't know what you're trying to start here, mister, but you'd better haul back on your reins real quick. I told you, she's got my brand. Ready, Nancy? Any time. I'm warning you, mister. Cut out. If you're still in Big Pine tomorrow morning, you're going to be buried here. Oh, oh, did you see the look on his face? He's fit to spit fire. Yeah. You're not afraid of him, are you? It's just that I don't like complications. Each weekday on CBS Radio, there's a bright package of lively entertainment that goes by the modest title, Just Entertainment. It's where to find Pat Buttram, his cohort, and his warm humor. Mr. Buttram is ably aided by lovely Marion Morgan and that singing foursome called the Halloween Quartet. Just for entertainment, sample Just Entertainment with Pat Buttram tomorrow on CBS Radio. Also on the recommended list, a fascinating fact filled ten minutes each weeknight with Ron Cochran. Recently, he's given the answer, please, treatment to listener queries on such topics as the Chesapeake Bay's Oyster War, the Irish Sweepstakes, Spring fever and underseas exploration of the Arctic. Be listening tomorrow night. 
Discover how you can ask Ron Cochran to give your question the answer, please. Just entertainment and answer, please. One for facts, one for fun. Leave your dial set where it is now to enjoy both these entertaining programs each Monday through Friday on CBS Radio. The next morning I was up early, moving through Big Pine, asking questions. The answers were the same everywhere. No one had seen three strangers riding into town in the last few days. No one knew where Chuck Anderson had gotten the jade chest piece. And no one advised asking him about it. Good morning. Morning, Miss Warren. Breakfast is ready whenever you are, Mr. Paladin. Trout and steak at our hospital. Don't tell me I'm the last one. Well, Mr. Gibson left more than an hour ago with Mr. Fry. You and Chuck and Mr. Dayton's the only ones left. Hang up your gun and come along. I'll be right there. I'll pour you coffee. I told you to get out of Big Pine by this morning. That's right, you did. Well, then get... right now. Sorry. Hanging up your gun. You afraid of me? Just afraid my breakfast will get cold. And it's a house rule. Land's sake! Chuck, you put down that gun. Not till he rides out of here. Put it away, I said. Sure as my name is what it is, you'll never set foot in this house again. Mm-hmm. Hang it up now. Now both of you go on in and eat your food before it gets cold. I'll meet you outside after breakfast. I hope so. Mr. Paladin? Hmm? Mr. Paladin, did Chuck really want to shoot you? He really did. And still does. Oh, ain't that nice? Had enough breakfast, Mr. Dayton? Yes, thanks. Have to be riding out. Gentlemen, see you later. Now that he's gone, I want to get something straight right now. Well, whatever on earth. I told you I want no impolite. You too, Mom. Just so you know what's going on. Well, what is going on? You are. There's one thing I want to know. Does this fella mean anything to you? Do you care? You know, blame well I care. Nice to hear it. Well, then I want to know. Does this fella Hush. mean... Huh? Good morning. You're just in time for breakfast. Only you'll have to leave your gun out in the hall. I'm making the rules now, Granny. Stay put. What? What's the idea? There's nothing worth stealing here. We'll take anything we can get when we're ready. Meantime, we'll just relax a little. You're waiting for somebody? You are smart, mister. How about some grub? I'm starving. Right, rustle up some breakfast, Granny. Don't wave that gun at me. Never mind, Ma. Come on. Not you, Chiquita. You stay here with us, just in case your Ma figures on cooking up some trouble. Well... Go on, Granny. Strange you should pick an out-of-the-way place like this to meet someone. And again, it's only a day from the border. You're starting to get too smart now, mister. Oh... I can do better than that. Yeah, with what? With this derringer that's pointed directly at your belly. You're bluffing. Call me. Tell your friend to holster his pistol, then unbuckle his belt. Go on. All right, Rip, you do what he says. Never mind, Rip, boy. Damn, where you been? Waiting. I figured you for a derringer, Mr. Paladin. You want to ease the hammer down real easy, then hand it over? Gently, so I don't blow your head off. That's too bad I didn't figure you. Did he give you the chess piece, Chuck? Yeah, he gave me it. Why? He and his friends beat up an old Chinaman in San Francisco. I said hand over that Derringer, Paladin. Start shooting him off! What? No! Hold it, everybody. Hold it. Hold it. This derringer can blow an awful big hole in the man. That's an old trick. Yeah, and you fell for it. Come on, get up. Thanks, Chuck. That was good thinking. Now, don't thank me, fancy pants. 
I just didn't want nobody else to have the pleasure of gunning you. I'm going to marry this girl, you hear? Oh, Chuck, I do, I do. Now, stop hanging on me. I've got man's business to take care of here. Got to get the guns. And then you're getting out of this town, Paladin. You hear? Every word. <laughs> Every word. Is it all there? Oh, nine hundred forty-three dollar. Then you can take it all back to your uncle. Honorable uncle will thank you for returning money on chess set. Or oh, maybe he even gives you chess set personally for payment. Well, if he offers, tell him I accept. And tell him after this to keep his money in a bank. Oh, yes, sir. I tell him. Good. Then it's finished. Yes, sir. Mr. Paladin. What? You look fat. Fat? Fat. Well, I'll tell you, hey, boy. This was the most nutritious trip I ever took. Today, few people realize that there's a woman behind the throne of England who wields immense power. Her influence resulted in the marriage of Queen Elizabeth to Philip. Her decisive voice abruptly ended the romance between Princess Margaret and commoner Peter Townsend. Her skillful strategy prevented the greatest court scandal since Edward's abdication. Who is this woman? Marina, the beautiful, brilliant Duchess of Kent. Now, for the first time, you can read her intimate, fascinating life story in the May issue of McCall's magazine. Also in May, McCall's, find out the truth about the private life problems that are bothering Bing Crosby and his boys. And read the most complete, detailed guide ever written on Florida versus California. All the facts that can help you decide between the two states as places to live, work, retire, or vacation. Get exciting McCall's for May at all newsstands now. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Frank and Doris Hersley and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Dick Crenna, Barbara Eiler, Vic Perrin, and Barney Phillips. Congratulations to our affiliate station, WDBO, Orlando, Florida, which celebrated its 35th birthday Friday, May 1st. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Trouble. <laughs>